in my lab here, you know, one of the things that we look at as we look at brain evolution is how that the, that the modern bird brain uh, evolved by looking at uh, the brains of more primitive animals like you know, traditional dinosaurs. So that's a big focus in what we do. Some other labs work on things like biomechanics, try to figure out how fast these animals were, what some of their physical capabilities were. Some other labs are working on uh, the physiology of the animals to you know, figure out uh, how much they would have had to eat, uh, what their digestive patterns were like, uh, that, uh, whether they were capable of being warm-blooded or not, and that kind of thing. Uh, our lab works a little bit on growth as well because we can now calculate how long the animals lived and uh, so we can understand something about the demographics of the populations. Uh, we're also working quite a bit on things like egg color and trying to figure out what color the eggs of the animals were. Basically, I mean, we just entertain a lot of different biological problems because 30, 40 years ago, most paleontologists had geological training, and that's really changed because now that most of our just biologists who work on fossils. So the same kinds of things that biologists who work on living animals look at, we look at. Yeah, I mean, I think that when you talk about what color animals were, that uh, you have to like really look at what you mean by that. And it's really what color do we perceive them at? Because mammals have really bad vision. Like we see terribly. I mean, that, uh, that there's only a small group of mammals that even see in color. So it's like us, chimps, gorillas, and orangutans. Every other animal sees in black and white, or every other mammal sees in black and white. So birds see in color. Not only do they see in color, they see in basic colors we can't see because that they see way into the ultraviolet. So if the bird was perceiving this room right now, it would look completely different to the bird than to, to us. Even things that appear white, like ostrich eggs, the birds, they appear as a totally different color because of that it's in a spectral band that we can't see. We predict then that dinosaurs would be really brilliantly colored as you know, signal kinds of things and everything else. So the way in which that we were able to calculate what some of these animals looked like is one, just by making guesses, is by making inferences, you know, that uh, you look at reptiles in general, and a lot of reptiles show breeding coloration, like this time of the year, if you're in the southwest or you're in a lot of places, even like in Connecticut, if you see lizards, they might have bright color patches on their sides. Uh, in fact, their whole body would be brightly colored because lizards also have tetrachromatic vision, so the way in which they perceive each other is very different from the way that we look at them. But we have uh, been able to calculate uh, what actual color some of the animals were, and that's because it's, it's, there's these little organelles that are called melanosomes, and that they're different in shape. And uh, by doing, and this is research that you know, our lab was involved in with others as well, and uh, that the melanosomes, you, by doing a mathematical analysis of their shapes, you can calculate what color the animals were. So, and also by looking at the way that they're distributed, you can de detect other structural properties. So one of the animals we looked at was an animal called Microraptor, which is a small uh, dromaeosaur relative of Velociraptor that lived in China about 130 million years ago. And what we found is that uh, it would have been a glossy uh, black uh, when it was alive because the melanosomes were actually preserved in the fossils. And you can see them using scanning electron microscopy. And also the way that they're arranged per, uh, parallel to one another, they made a diffraction gradient. So they would have had the same kind of look as some of the like, iridescent blackbirds or crows that you see on bright sunny days. So it's a small animal about this big, but it would have been iridescent blue-black. It's pretty difficult work to be able to calculate this stuff. Nevertheless, if you have the right fossils and you have enough time and money and stuff, it can be done. I don't know. It's, it's, you know, people ask me that a lot, and I know that this sounds like kind of a, like, like I, I guess I can't say <laughs> on TV. But <laughs> what really keeps me going is I just want to see if we're clever enough to figure it out. So we'll have some idea. I'll be with my students, my colleagues. We'll say, yeah, you know, that a bartender will ask us, like, what color were they? And go, at first you say, you don't know. And then you sit around for a couple weeks and say, well, maybe we can just figure this out. And then you figure it out, and that's great. So it's just, it's kind of the curiosity of just stuff that keeps driving me.